In this video I want to tell you about the homotopy extension property which may seem a little technical at first but it's the thing that drives our intuition behind homotopy. For example it's the thing that tells us that this space and this space are homotopy equivalent just by squishing this bar in the middle of the theta. It's the thing that tells us that this space, the sphere, with a one cell attached like this is homotopy equivalent to the pinched torus. Just by squishing this one cell down to, to a single point. It's that kind of argument that you can formalize using the homotopy extension property. So what is the homotopy extension property? Well, suppose I'm given a space X and a subspace A. We say that the pair XA satisfies or has the homotopy extension property, which I'm just going to write HEP, if every continuous map to some other space y, I should say for, for every continuous map f, um, and every homotopy uh, little h just defined on a with h x 0 equals f of x there exists a homotopy capital H um, with H X zero equals F of X and H restricted to a times 0, 1 equals little h. Phew, okay, that's a bit of a mouthful. What on earth is this saying? It basically saying if we have a homotopy defined on a subset A, you want to be able to extend that to the whole set X. That's all it's really saying. But we have to say, you know, suppose you have the initial data F that you're going to homotope. And you have a homotopy of f just defined on a so this this equation here is just for x in a then you can find a homotopy on a whole space that homotops this map f and which agrees with the homotopy you've already got on the subspace a right now i told you it would look a bit technical so what's that got to do with what i was saying over here let me give you a proposition If x comma a has the homotopy extension property and a is contractible, then x, just the space x, is homotopy equivalent to the quotient space where we crush a to a point. Remember, this was the quotient of a by the equivalence relation that identifies all the points in A to a single point. So if we go back to these pictures, what's happening here is in this top picture, this red guy is the subset A, and that gets crushed down to this point. And in the second guy, this arc is the subspace A, and that gets crushed down to this point. So in each case, we're saying this quotient space is homotopy equivalent to the thing we started with. So let's prove this proposition. To prove two spaces are homotopy equivalent, we need to give a map one way and a map the other way, such that the compositions 
are homotopic to the identity maps of their respective spaces. So one map is easy. We have the quotient map, which I'll call Q, going from x to x over a, that just sends every point in a to a single point here. I need to find a map going the other way, um, so how am I going to do that? So to construct that map going the other way, I need to work a bit harder. So I know that A is contractible. i.e. there exists some point little a in A and a homotopy which I'm going to write as H subscript T going from A to A with H0 being the identity on A and H1 uh, being the constant map that sends everything to this single point little a. And okay this is this homotopy goes from A to A but I could also think of it as going to X because A, a is a subset of X. So what I can do is using the homotopy extension principle or homotopy extension property we get a continuous map or a continuous homotopy HT from X to X such that H0 is the identity on X and HT restricted to A is this homotopy little HT. Yeah, so I should say a, a homotopy rather than that. Now, so that, that's how you're using the homotopy extension property. Now H1, if we think about what H1 does, well all we know is that if we restrict it to A, we get little h1, and little h1 is the constant map. So big H1 applied to the whole set A just gives us the singleton set, little a. Right, all of these points get crushed down to one point. And that means that H1 factors as G composed the quotient map for some continuous map G defined on the quotient space. All this is saying is because the whole of A gets crushed to a point, you might as well crush it to a point first and then do the rest of the map. Now why is this map continuous? Well, if you look at my second video on the quotient topology, that's all about studying continuous maps out of a quotient space and proving that things like this are continuous. And now we have a map G that goes from X over A to X, which is the right kind of thing to be a homotopy inverse for Q. So the claim is that it is indeed a homotopy inverse. So in particular, G composed Q is homotopic to the identity uh, on X, right? Because Q goes from X to the quotient, G goes back again. So it's homotopic to the identity on X. And the other direction is homotopic to the identity on the quotient space. So the first of these is not too hard. So G compose Q equals H1. And H1 is homotopic to H0 via the homotopy H. So, uh, and H0 is the identity on X. So that's, that's that. That's not too hard. This one is a bit harder. Um, so let me number them one and two. And this is the proof of one. So the proof of two, um, I'm going to look at this map. Q compose HT. So that goes from X to X and then to the quotient. And actually at all times, 
uh, Q compose HT of A equals Q compose little ht of A because big ht agrees with little ht on the subset A and little ht was a map from A to A inside X. So this is contained in Q of A and Q of A is a single point. Right In the quotient space X over A a gets crushed down to a point, so this is a single point. In other words, Q compose HT descends to the quotient and can be written as HT bar compose Q for some HT bar going now from X over A to X over A. Again, this is just saying if you have a map that crushes everything to a point, you might as well crush the stuff to a point first, do Q first, and then do something else. And again, this is continuous using the second video I made on the quotient topology. So if you haven't seen that video, you can go and watch it after this. Okay, so now we have a homotopy on the quotient space. That's the kind of thing we need, right? We want a homotopy to the identity on the quotient space. Well, certainly h bar 0 is the identity. Because h0 is just the identity. What about h1 bar? We want h1 bar to be this other composition, what, q composed g. Um, so actually to prove this what I'm going to do is cheat and compose it with Q on this side because we know what H1 bar compose Q is it's equal to Q compose HT oh sorry compose H1 H1 if you look up here H1 is equal to G compose Q so this is Q compose G compose Q. And that's almost what we wanted to prove, right? We wanted to prove H1 bar was Q compose G, and now we've proved H1 bar compose Q is Q compose G compose Q. So if we could cancel off the Qs, we'd be done. We can cancel off the Qs because Q is surjective, right? It's the quotient map that sends a, a point to its equivalence class. So that has to be surjective by definition. And you can always cancel off a surjective map on the right. So it has a right inverse. It's, it's not an invertible map, but it does have a right inverse. In other words, you can always pr pick a pre-image. essentially what this is saying. So if, if two things agree after composing with a surjection on the right, then they agree. So this means h1 bar equals q compose g. And that's homotopic to h0 bar, which is the identity on x over a. So we see that g and q are homotopy inverses. So in the next video, I'm going to prove that cell complexes, if you have a, a cell complex X and a subcomplex A, they satisfy the homotopy extension principle. So for example, in, in these examples here, we can contract these contractible uh, red guys without changing the homotopy type.